Oh, come on, people of God, and put your hands together. Oh, come on and lift up the name of the Most High God. Oh, come on and lift up the name of Jesus this evening. Oh, we serve an awesome God. We serve a holy God. We serve an omnipotent God. We serve an omnipresent God. Oh, we serve a thrice holy God. Oh, yes, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Redeemer of Israel. Oh, God, we come and we lift you up. Oh, El Shaddai. Elohim. Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shalom. We call on your name. Oh, God, we call on you. So up and so forth your glory in our lives, oh God. Oh God, we call forth your presence in our lives. We call for your divine providence to be prominent in our lives, oh God. Oh God, permeate our lives, saturate us. Oh God, every portion of our lives, every part of our being, oh God. Oh God, submerged under your glory, submerged under your oil, submerged under your power. Oh God, submit it to you, oh God. We come to you, oh God, and we thank you for who you are. We glorify you for who you are. We thank you for every victory, oh God. We thank you for every healing, oh God. We thank you for wholeness, God. We thank you for recovery, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for restoration, oh God, in this season. Oh God, we praise you, God of the breakthrough. Oh God, of miracle signs and wonders. Oh God, we call upon your name. We call upon the name Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus, by which we can claim our inheritance. Jesus, by whose blood we are made whole. Jesus. Oh, by whose stripes we are healed. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh God, we call on your most holy name, oh God. Yahweh, our God, our Redeemer, our strength, oh God, our breakthrough. We praise you for this season. We thank you for this season. We thank you for transition. Oh God, not for where we were. We praise you for where we were, but we glorify you for where we are. Oh yes, God, this season right here of elevation, this season of ascension, we praise you for it right now in the name of Jesus. This is our season where ceilings are broken. Ah, yes. This is the season where limitations are surpassed. This is our season of breakthrough, miracles, signs, and wonders. We call them forth right now in the name of Jesus. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh God, we thank you for breakthrough. We praise you for breakthrough. We glorify you for breakthrough. Oh God, that moment of transition, that moment of translation, we thank you for it. Ah, yes, that moment, hey, that moment of breakthrough, oh God. Yes, Lord, we praise you. Ha, ah, all limitations are falling. Ah, oh, hindrances, oh, Yokes are being destroyed. Hey, in this season, release, release, release. That's how you release a miracle in your life. You got to call for the release. Oh, yes. I thank you for this season. I praise you for this season. Oh, come on, people of God. Give God a thunderous praise. A thunderous praise. A thunderous praise. A thunderous praise. Hey. A miraculous praise. A praise that breaks forth. A breakthrough in this season. Hey. Lord. 
breakthrough. Hey, Lord of the breakthrough. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And we worship you. We worship you, worship you. Say, Lord of the breakthrough. Lord of the breakthrough. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. And we worship you. We worship you. Say you are the Lord. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Cry, Lord, Lord of the breakthrough. Oh Lord, Lord of the breakthrough. You are the Lord. You are the Lord of the breakthrough. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Presence was enough. Lord of the breakthrough. 
miracles started to rain. Eh? Oh, Signs and wonders began to appear. Oh, breakthrough how many of you believe that huh everybody don't need a breakthrough but without a breakthrough there will be no birthing I just to take it to the natural sense without a breakthrough there's no birthing am I right there must be a coming forth somebody say a coming forth a breaking forth a coming through. A coming through. Say it again. A coming through. You need to take the pressure. My goodness, I feel like teaching tonight. You need to take the pressure that you under and let it be to come the pressure that breaks you through. Ah, uh, y'all not hear me. You ought to turn that against the enemy. What you meant for my destruction, God's gonna turn it to my to my good. We honor you. 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 We honor you.
the spirit of you and just pray in the spirit. tonight. Let God hear from you. Ick out of your belly. Let liver and water flow. Let somebody else be healed by what you say tonight. Don't wait on me to pray. You pray. You're a great God. You're a mighty God. You're all powerful. You're the most high God. There's none like you. So God, we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his shed blood. We thank you for the Holy Spirit and the manifestation of the Spirit that has been given to every one of us that we may profit. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and counsel. We thank you for the fear of the Lord. We thank you, God, right now, God, for the gift of faith, God, for the activation of miracles in our midst, God. We thank you right now, God, for signs and wonders, God, following. Bless, bless, bless your people. Do a mighty and a great thing. Here's your servant's prayer. Father God, I thank you that you've sent a word for your people. Allow me to speak it, God. In the spirit that you sent it, with the grace upon it, and the favor, God, that you designed. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 The word of God is what I stand upon. My faith is ever growing. You may be seated. Breaking through, breaking through. Breaking through. Sunday I told you that. God allows recalls and he does recalls here. I told you the one thing that we have to do is understand that in this Christian walk, you're not perfect. And I'm constantly amazed at how people assess themselves and think that they've arrived. But we're all being perfected and, and when we're being perfected we have to understand that in the move of being perfected there are times that you're going to be subjected to transgressions and wrongdoings things that are not like God and that's why God allows a recall he can, he, he takes us and he gives us opportunity to come in and those things that are lacking those things that are weak he begins to perfect them come on now And if I could use the terminology, even though I don't really like the analogy, but I'll use it as though he's allowing the Holy Spirit to be the mechanic to fix what's wrong with you because he knows exactly what you need. And none of us go through the same things and none of us go through the same dispositions. None of our struggles are the same, though they may be kin to one another. They are unique to us. 
When we begin to look at things like this, and when we begin to think about things like this, we have to understand that it's all right if God does a recall with you. Because if he does a recall, I, I, I just want you to smile. You don't have to look at anybody. Just smile and smile back at me and say, what God is getting ready to do in my life. Say it again. What God is getting ready to do in my life. When he does a recall, it's either going to be a replacement or a repair. I said a replacement. You're not hearing me. Some people need God to replace some things because they're not conducive to what his word or who his word say they should be. Their conditions are not conducive to healing. Come on. I wish I had a, a, a real church. And one of the reasons that we don't have people that believe God anymore is they've succumbed to being out of his house. And when you don't use something for a while, even though it's sharp, it'll become dull. Ecclesiastes 10 chapter, 10th verse says, if iron be blunt, and you do not wet the edge, which means you don't sharpen it, then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct, which says that even though you're not in a church, and even though you may not come out on Sunday, and even though you may not be here tonight, God ought to be at your house. So you have to sharpen the edge. Somebody says sharpen the edge. Proverbs 27, 17 says iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. When I begin to think about breakthroughs and what God is doing and what he's saying in this season, I like to think about David and over in 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter, and we're beginning around verse 17, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. And you don't have to worry. This is a study that we got a designated reader for you. Why don't you just let the Holy Spirit speak to you? 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, uh -huh. all the Philistines came up to seek David. Uh -huh. And David heard of it uh -huh. and went down to the hole. Read the next verse. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. Now, let me tell you what's going on so you can catch this and then you'll be able to grasp what I'm saying. The Philistines heard that David was king. And the reason that they heard that David was king was because they also heard that Saul was no longer king. <laughs> so they were not going to give commendation, or you hear me, or appreciation for David being king. Actually, what they were going was to stop him from being anchored in his position. So you, you have where we're at now, right? Continue to read. And David inquired of the Lord, uh -huh. saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Go ahead. Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto David, mm -hmm. Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. So David inquired of the Lord. Isn't it amazing how Christians get in a situation and then they want to ask God how to come out? But wisdom is profitable to direct, which said that before we get into any type engagement, we should inquire of the Lord. Let me use another word. We should ask God. I, I don't even believe that we should loan money personally without asking the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of time, the people that you're loaning, I, I, I sidebar without permission, I'm sorry. But, but a lot of time, the people you're loaning money to are the very people that God put at a disposition so he can get their attention. And then they came to you because they knew you were an easy target. Because they knew you wouldn't inquire of the Lord. 
You just act according to your resources and misquote your own scripture. I got to continue to teach. Go ahead. And David inquired. And David came to Belperazim. Uh -huh. And David smote them there uh -huh. and said, Go ahead. The Lord has broken forth upon mine enemies before me mm -hmm. as the breach of waters. Go ahead. Therefore, he called the name of that place Belperazim. Belperazim. Say that word. Belperazim. Bel Say it again. Belperazim. Tell your neighbor that, that, that translated equates to breaking through. Coming forth. Breaking forth upon the enemy. You know, see, a breakthrough is all right. Are you hearing me? But a little bit more that happened than them just breaking through. Go to verse 21. And there they left their images, uh -huh. and David and his men burned them. Which means that if they left their images, they were running. Continue. And the Philistines came up yet again. Uh huh. And spread themselves in the valley of Rephim. But the enemy does not give up easily. Jnb came again. Go ahead. And when David inquired of the Lord, uh -huh. he said, uh -huh. Thou shalt not go up. Continue to read. But fetch a compass behind them uh -huh. and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees. Uh -huh that then thou shalt bestir thyself. Go ahead. For then shall the Lord go out before thee uh -huh. to smite the host of the Philistines. Uh -huh. And David did so as the Lord had commanded him uh -huh. and smote the Philistines from Geba mm -hmm. until thou come to Gezer. Ooh, did you hear that? I don't think y'all heard. See, sometimes your eyes follow the scripture because you're really reading on a time constraint. Most Christians read the Bible and they don't really read it to be related to by the Holy Spirit. They don't even read for interpretation. They read to be able to say they read. Are you hearing me? But if you saw this, the Philistines showed up twice. Am I right? And David inquired twice. What is the lesson that I'm teaching you? It doesn't matter that you face that devil one time. You got to ask God every time. Uh, Y'all not understanding what I'm saying? You cannot rest on what happened yesterday to mean that you got victory today. Each day carries its own victory. And I, I, I believe that we miss, you know, I believe we miss God sometimes because presumption destroys a people. But here's where I'm going with breakthrough. And, and, and here's where I want you to analyze yourself. It's not for me to judge you. But breakthrough follows praying people. Let me say that again. Breakthrough follows praying people. It is their lifestyle. See, people love to latch on with you after you've broken through but they don't want to pray with you while you're breaking through <laughs> many people will come through after you break through Lot came through by association with Abraham <laughs> and, 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 and most People want the breakthrough, but they don't move when that urge to pray hits them. Because when the urge to pray hits, it's probably during your sleeping hours, or it's probably at a time that you designated that you're going to get your rest. And then you say, after I get up, I ain't going to pray. But if what if someone's life was on hold? Waiting on your intercession. But you're saying I need a nap while they're getting ready to take a permanent sleep. And God was entrusting you into their, their care into you. Let me teach, let me teach, let me teach. She Christian look for a breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. Am I right? And I 
get in trouble when I say this, but I don't look for a lot of breakthroughs. I kind of follow a principle that God established. And I saw it in his word. Can a man enter a second time into his mother's womb? How many times can you break through in the natural? How many? How many times? So it's not the breakthrough that matters. It's the maturing of the person after the breakthrough. And, and so what you have, you have, you have a lot of baby Christians who want to go back in the womb when it gets sick. And, and you can't go back in the womb when it gets sick. You got to understand that I've already been pushed out and I'm already in it. And so I have to mature while I'm in conflict. I have to mature in trials and in tribulation. I have to grow and go. Somebody say grow and go. Why must we go and grow while we in tribulation, while we in conflict, while we in trial? We have to do that because it brings glory to God. It shows God that we are depending upon him. How can you be a Christian who talks about their cup running over, my goodness, when they won't even position their cup? <laughs> I better slow down. Y'all looking at me kind of funny there. God wants some glory out of your life. All of this feeling sorry for yourself, that's a strategy and a ploy of the enemy. Self-pity, self-pity when you're supposed to be maturing. Somebody say grow. Say it again, grow. You're sitting there, you're feeling sorry for yourself, but you didn't even get in the fight. You didn't even try to do anything to fight. You wanted somebody to stand up and fight for you so you can come through like Lot, and then you're going to take that Lot spirit and try to take the best of what the one who prayed for you received. Ah, <laughs> uh, my goodness. It's time to go forward. Somebody said go forward. You have to learn breakthrough when breakthrough happens it doesn't happen the way you're thinking when breakthrough comes it comes and it tells you that you got to push beyond your loneliness <laughs> when breakthrough comes it tells you you got to push beyond your disappointment you have to push beyond your poverty poverty then if you have to push see so when you're breaking through you have to take your mind somebody say my, my mind my mind touch it say my mind my mind say it again my mind come on talk about it. talk to that thing that trouble you say my mind i don't see it i can't see everybody in here doing it so i know everybody not at, at home doing it touch your head say my mind say it again my mind belongs to god say it again my mind belongs to god touch your head say my mind belongs to god i'm still waiting on it. i don't have everybody in my mind belongs to God. Musicians, touch your head. My mind belongs to God. Say it again. My mind belongs to God. <laughs> it's not, it's not, a, it's not a fight. It's not a fight. It's not a fight. You know what? Because the enemy knows you're not going to fight. Because you lost the will to fight. But Paul told the church at Corinth in his second letter to them, he said, look, we're troubled on every side, but not to be distressed, perplexed, my goodness, but not in despair, persecuted, my goodness, but not forsaken, cast down, but we will not be destroyed. Many Christians want God to act based on their potential. But God is the God who moves by faith. And faith flourishes under conflict. I know, I know a few stories. I remember the lady whose son had died in the Bible. Come on now. But she said, it shall be well. Is that what she said? Do I have any Bible students in here? Is that what he said? She said, it shall be what? She was under stress and under pressure. But she said, look, I got to go the way of the prophet. And the reason that she had to go the way of the prophet then, don't let prophets fool you. The reason she had to go the way of the prophet then, the Holy Spirit had not yet come. So follow my teaching. Are you with me? Are there, people don't like that. Are you understanding? See, see, a lot of times you follow men and a title. But in our dispensation, you follow the spirit first. 
You follow the Holy Spirit first. That's the problem in the church. Too many people following man first and not the spirit. Y'all got quiet up in here. Y'all didn't like what I say. So, Pastor Dave, I'm telling you yes, because if you're following the Holy Spirit and I'm following the Holy Spirit, we're walking in accord. Can two walk together? Except they uh, agree. You want God to act according to your potential. I said, I'm not interested in your potential. I gave you that. But what he is saying is that when we come together and when he brings us back together, hear me, hear me with clarity. Hear me with clarity as I stress this point. Because I, I found this to be especially true in Shekinah Glory Powerhouse. People hide behind their title. Visitors come. Somebody come to the church. You inter introducing yourself by your title. You're not your title first. You're your person first. So stop hiding. Oh, it got quiet up in here. From in the future, you don't introduce your title first. Introduce your... Because the title had been abandoned by too many. So we got a lot of titles on the books with no names following. So let's just go back and do it the right way. Because I, I, I'm a student of the word. And I know that I believe that people want to relate to a person and not a title. Some people aggrandize themselves and hide behind a title. I, it's, it's getting faint now. Y'all didn't like that. I worked hard to get this title, Pastor. Uh, pastor, you don't understand. Uh, pastor, Pastor, Pastor. And Pastor do, does understand. What Pastor also understands is that a lot of times you get a title and then you sit on your duff. You forget from whence you came. Because you start thinking you arrived. Sometimes maybe you need to go back to your basic name. And remember from whence you started. Oh my goodness, leave that alone, Pastor David. But have confidence in your assignment and you don't struggle with using your name. We're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And I want, and we started at verse 1, and, and I just want you to, James, I want you to read the first three words for me right now. Now I, Paul. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now I, what? Paul. Now I, Paul. Paul was a chief apostle. He didn't say, now I, Apostle Paul. He did not say that, did he? He said, now I what? Paul. And if you just go through and do a keyword study, you see how many times he just said, I, Paul. I, Paul. I, Paul. Are y'all hearing me? Continue to, continue to read. Now I, Paul, myself, uh -huh. beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. Go ahead. Who in presence am base among you, uh -huh. but being absent and bold toward you. Go ahead. But I beseech you mm -hmm. that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence, uh -huh. wherewith I think to be bold against some, uh -huh. which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. So, so the Paul said, hold on a minute now. <laughs> Let me get it straight. I am Paul. And you sitting here thinking I'm just some random joke. I'm paraphrasing what he's telling them. I'm not just random Joe, even though I look like Joe Random. Go ahead. For though we walk in the flesh, we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So he's saying, look, I, 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 I look like that. I, I look like you. I look like you. But I'm telling you strategically, when it's all going down, I'm not going to be you. Go ahead. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, uh -huh. but mighty through God to the Go pulling ahead. down Go ahead. of strongholds, uh -huh. casting down imaginations uh -huh. and that, every high thing. Read that again. Casting down imaginations uh -huh. and every high thing. Paul is giving a strategy. He's giving a strategy. Oh, y'all hear me? He's giving a strategy. He's saying you, the first strategy is you got to cast down what? 
Imagination. So he said, you got to deal with how you think. <laughs> deal with how you think. You're sitting here and you're thinking you put your pants on like the next one and like this gift and like that. Come on, it's getting quiet up in here now. Because we, we're going to talk about breaks and we got to get it right. Am I right? Okay, neighbor, all of us look alike. But we're not equipped the same. Go ahead. That exalted itself against the knowledge of God uh -huh. and bringing into captivity uh -huh. every thought to the obedience of Christ. Continue. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience, uh -huh. when your obedience is fulfilled, uh -huh. do you look on things after the outward appearance? Mm -hmm. If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, uh -huh. let him of himself think this again, uh -huh. that he is Christ, uh -huh. even so are we Christ. He said, look, we, we belong to him too. Go ahead. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority. He said, look, I, I can't. Go ahead. Which the Lord had given us for edification uh -huh. and not for your destruction, mm -hmm. I should not be ashamed. Paul said, look, God gave me authority to shape up some things. But I just want you to understand how to fight because y'all like to just start quoting, uh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But you, you, you like to start there, but you don't want to start with the real you. You want to start with weaponry that you haven't even earned. Because you're thinking that your weaponry coming behind a title. But your weaponry is coming behind you understanding your name. Uh, I'm not teaching well now. See, because y'all want me to break you through to get a, you want me to break you through to get this, 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 and this. That's not the breakthrough. The breakthrough is getting the understanding to know how to engage in battle. How to be who God called you to be. How to get answers to your prayers. How to know that God loves you. You see, people want comfortability with a title. They want to be comfortable. Well, I throw my title out there, then people will bike up. You know what they want? Matter of fact, they come at you worse. But I began to think, and I was thinking about something in John chapter 5, and when I, you know, in John chapter 5, I read it in your own time, but uh, this man had been in this condition 38 years. I might say 38 years of going through. And, and here we are, we have a people that may have two years, three years, five years, seven years in their disposition, and they've caved in and quit. But at least the man was in the right place, seeking, come on, relief for his disposition. Uh, 38 long years. Somebody say long years. And I, I begin to think about the God who breaks through for Shekinah now. I'm bringing it home now. I'm talking about the God who breaks through for this house. The God who loves Shekinah. The God who tells us how to do, when to do, and what to do. And I think about the God who breaks through for Shekinah. And I began to tell you a testimony on Sunday about one who was sick, my goodness, and, and they had sickle cell, uh, and they cells had sickle to the point that it was trying to take them out of here. And then I told you on top of that, that with the sickle cell, COVID-19 creeped in uh, because the body had become weak in. And most people know that that would be a normal death sentence for most people, my goodness. But when God comes on the scene, uh, and the spirit of breakthrough comes in the house uh, God begins to do something and I begin to think about the young man my goodness uh, who had this issue of blood uh, and he had it for 34 long years are you in and we know that sickle cell is supposed to be a lifetime sentence uh, but I believe God by my faith in God my goodness that even sickle cells have to fall under the name of Jesus. I believe that God want to make those sickle cells right. That he want to round them out where they can do their jobs. Are oh, you hearing me? To take the sickle out and make it a full, come on somebody say a full cell. A full cell where it'll flow. It'll do what it's supposed to do. The red blood cell will do what it is supposed to do. I believe God for healing. Do you believe God for healing? 
just in case you don't understand the God that I'm talking about right now, he's the same God who allowed Jesus to come down, my goodness, and two blind men saw him. And he said, Jesus, our son of David, uh, have mercy on me. The blind men followed Jesus in the house. Jesus said unto them, believe ye that I'm able to do this. So tonight I come asking somebody, do you believe that God is able to change your situation? Because if you believe that God is able to change your situation, start walking around wherever you at. Don't sit in your disposition. Don't sit in what you're going through. Don't stay the same. Wake up and realize that I shall live and not die. You're not paralyzed. Oh, everybody moving. Everybody moving. Everybody moving. Everybody moving. According to your faith, be it unto you. Everybody moving. Everybody moving. Remember faith, faith, faith. The substance of things hoped for. Evident to everybody things unseen. Faith that changes a disposition into a position of strength. You know, faith, 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 faith made the blind man see. Faith will make the crippled person walk, my goodness. Faith, will, faith that made the withered hand become healed. Ah, oh, my goodness, yes. They say you got rheumatoid arthritis. You're going to have it as long as you take it. You can speak to it. Say, you can't never speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. Come on. People got joint pain. You got to touch where you hurt at. You got to let God know. God, you know my pain. God, you know what I'm going through. But you're the God who breaks through on pain. You're the God who breaks through on a disposition. You're the God who heals in a time of storm. Because we trust God. Tell your neighbor, we trust God. Tell him again, we trust God. We find that place called hope. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Getting ready to get you out of here. I know y'all ready to go. I know y'all don't like being long on Wednesday night. You got so much to do and it's just hard to have time for God right now. You want God to break through and break through quickly. But I'm here to tell you right now. I've worked many things that look like an easy job when you started. And you have to stop and go get a tool a little bit more powerful. I don't have real people yet. See, you can, you can start with the right mindset. You can start with the proper tool. But if it's not the best tool for the job, it won't do the job. But when you get a right tool, somebody say a right tool. I'll just make it simple for you. Which one would you rather cut a tree down with? A chainsaw or a handsaw? Both will do the job. Am I right? But one does it with power. One does it with power. Are you hearing me? All you got to do is just lay it in there and let it do what it does. Am I right? But the other one requires your power. See, a chainsaw pulls no power from you. But a handsaw, it pulls your power. And there are many Christians who came up from a handsaw generation who refuse to take the power that God is making available now. God will heal you speedily. God will recover you speedily. He will avenge his elect speedily. We're closing with this verse here. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 8. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 8. Therefore being justified by faith. Uh -huh. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Go ahead. By whom also we have access by faith. Uh -huh. And to this grace wherein we stand. Uh -huh. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Go ahead. And not only so. Uh -huh. But we glory in tribulations also. Yes. Go ahead. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. You're going through. 
But God's checking your patience. Uh huh. And patience experience. Uh huh. And experience hope. When you experience what you're going through, it's supposed to bring you to hope. Hold thou, and I'm going through what I'm going through. I'm experiencing what I'm going through. So it'll drive me to hope more in God. Continue. And hope maketh not a shame. Uh-huh. Because the love of God is shed Ooh, abroad. The love of God. Saints, everything about you is predicated by or upon the love of God. Jesus came because God loved you. He wipes away, eradicates, eliminates your sins because he loves you. He heals your body because he loves you. He gives you peace because he loves you. He provides for you because he... The question is not about God love. The real question is, do you love God? Go ahead. It's shed abroad in our hearts uh -huh. by the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. which is given unto us. So he, he's telling you again that the Holy Ghost is given to you. Tell you if it's given to you. I know we come up from a generation where they talk about you seek for it, but no, he, he gave it to us. He gave it to us. Now, now, if you don't take possession of something that was given to you, that's on you. Especially when it's valuable and essential to your survival still. Continue. For when we were yet without strength. Read that again. For when we were yet without strength. One more time. For when we were yet without strength. Uh -huh. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Listen to me. Listen to me well as I talk about breaking through. I don't want to be hard on Christians. But I do want to be truthful to Christians. Jesus had died for you before you ever came in. Jesus had died for you. You, you, you gotta you, see if you don't armor yourself to understand that he actually had died for you before you accepted him. Before your confession of faith, of salvation. He had died for you. And it'll never honor you to become who or what you're supposed to be as a gift of God until you realize he died for you while you were still messy. He let you live through your mess. I don't have a real church now. It got quiet up in here then. Boy, it got quiet. Let me dig my yeah out. <laughs> it got good and quiet up in here. See, see, you want to act like you got clean. And then he came. But he came while you were struggling. He came while you were limping. Come on. He came while you were crawling in your iniquity. I don't have a real church yet. But verse 8. But Read. God. Go ahead. But God commended his love toward us. Uh -huh. In that. Uh -huh. While we were yet sinners. Uh -huh. Christ died for us. So while we were yet sinners, he did what? So stop trying to make people think when you stop drinking, the Lord came. He had already died for you while you were still turning it up. Oh, you hear y'all not hear me. I don't have a real church now. Because y'all don't like to go back to where you came from in your mind. And the reason that a lot of people don't like to go back because they're not sure they are delivered from whence they started. Oh, you hear me? They running from their past, but they past already done lapped them. <laughs> oh, you understanding what I'm saying? I was speaking on breaking through. And I'm trying to get you to understand that until you're honest with yourself, there'll be no breakthrough. The first breakthrough you're going to have to have is the breakthrough of truth. Talking to yourself, identifying your strengths and your weaknesses, being honest before God, and letting God know that you need Him. God, I need you. 
the Holy Spirit has come. And the Holy Spirit does reside in you. But he wants you to renew your mind. He wants you to understand that you have to renew your mind. That everything about you is not good. And you need to quit trying to sell it as though it is. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know a Christian that's 100% good. If you're not being worked on, you make him a liar. I'm just going book. If we say we have no sin, I, I'm not in the book. I'm making up stuff. I'm making up stuff. I, obviously, right? Did the book say that or did Billy Davis say that? See, 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 you can't get so saved that you can't be honest with yourself. Because that's how the enemy gets you because he departs for a season. And you don't know if a season, a few months or a few years, it could be a decade. But when he comes back, he's bringing allies. Seven spirits more. To see, do you really know who you are? You say you broke through. But he knows that a man unwilling to fight is a man that'll never break through. God loves you. God loves you. I say God loves you. And when you understand that God loves you, after a while you accept your imperfections. After a while you accept the fact that, look, I don't have it all together. But I'm not going to try to impress anybody. And I'm certainly not going to hide behind a title. So, I'm not stripping anyone of titles, so don't you run off and say, say the wrong thing. What I said was, don't you hide behind your title. I don't want you introducing yourself as title so-and-so. Your name is your first name. Y'all don't like that. Yeah. Uh, that just doesn't seem like the governmental order of that house will be correct if you just took away everybody's title and you just called them by first names. Well, it is what it is because if you will learn for people to call you by your first name and answer to that you'll make sure your name is good because I know what the book said and I'm closing with this last sentence here he said he'll make all the families of the earth be blessed but he also said I'll make your something great I'll make your what I'll make your title great I'll make your title great. I'll make your title great. That's what he said. No, no. He said, I'll make your what? John 1 and 6. There was a man sent by God whose name was Billy Joe Davis Jr. See, until you're able to understand that your gift set is tied up in your name, you'll chase a title and never break through. Father God, we thank you for your word that you've given tonight. We thank you for your people, God. I pray that they had ears to listen, hearts to understand, minds to receive, eyes that reveal what they stand in need of. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you for protecting us, God. Continue to provide for us, God. We thank you. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you, God, that in this house, God, we will not allow our culture to overtake our conviction. We are the people that you called us to be. We are covenant keepers, God. We stand on the platform of the covenant, God. We trust you, God, right now. Continue to provide for us. Continue to protect us. Continue to shield us from our enemies, God. We thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you that healing is in our midst, God. We thank you, God, that miracles abound in our midst, God. We thank you, God, for showing yourself strong on our behalf, God. Your good hand is upon us, your strong hand upon our enemies. Protect this house, God. Protect your people. It's your servant's prayer. I give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Will you all shout, God loves you. Say it, and God loves me. And as for me, that's good enough. Have a blessed night. God bless you.